Marks the officials tonight. Man-to-man -to -man pressure for Washington. We're just underway. And Billups loses it out of bounds. You do have to remember he is a true freshman. He is prone to turn it over every now and then. He's also had the first triple-double in the history of Colorado basketball. <laughs> that says something to me right off the top. And only the sixth in Big 8 history. Buffalo's dropping back in what looks like a 3-2 zone or a 1-2-2 look. Yeah, let's see what they do with the point. Yeah, now it's a 3-2. Really collapsing the point down in there. Going to make the Husky shoot the ball away. Skip pass to Boston. Booker lobbed to McCullough for the layup. That is the plus for the Huskies inside. Is the guy's got very good, soft hands. Can catch the ball, shoot it, and kept it up very high. And a nice pass from Booker. He tried to make it look like a jump shot. Martis Moore. Kutze is not a score. Four of these five starters for Colorado are at 14 points a game and better. Almost all the points for Joe Harrington coming from that quartet. Here's Billups again to the bucket. McCullough with the block and the rebound. On the move is Booker. Hamilton open, takes the three. Hamilton actually shooting the ball well from three-point range, although not what I would call a great three-point shooter. Booker on the rebound. Bob Bender said today that the pace of the basketball game to him is dictated by turnovers. If Washington can force turnovers, then they'll run. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's, that's Bob. Bob has kind of the philosophy I do. You run with a purpose. You got to know why you're running. I, I hate guys who just go out there and do what I call pivot pass, tear around up and down the floor. But they know they want to run off those turnovers, and that can ignite them. Sanford walked with the ball. Then you would not have liked watching one of Colorado's games this year against George Mason. 132 to 117. It was an overtime winning. And if you're not a college basketball fan, Paul Westhead is now coaching at George Mason. Well, yeah, and, and, and of course, Joe Harrington used to coach at George Mason, but that's the way uh, uh, Paul teaches. They, they just want to get up and down. Hamilton got a hand on it, and Phillips sort of escorted him out of bounds. It'll stay a Colorado ball, but already Washington has been able to put good pressure on the freshman Phillips. Well, I was wonder wondering what was going to happen if they were going to pick him up full court, but here's the pressure out here with Hamilton. Actually, he dribbles it off the heel of his foot. That's over and back right there, folks, and they called it. Not a smart play. Now, let me tell you something. I used to teach young kids. When you take the ball on half court because you can throw it in back court in, in, in high school and college, straddle the mid court line. That way you never have any problem. If you're straddling it and the ball goes in the back court, you just step, pivot over, and catch the ball. You know, the ball game for Colorado, Charlie Melvin. And although it says Los Alamos, New Mexico, he played last year at Bellevue Community College. Right across the lake. Samford. Bumped on his way to the bucket. Moore will get the foul. And there you see Sanford's first step quickness. Very, very good. Generally probably going to be quicker than most guys that he faces this year. Catches the ball, fakes his shot right there, puts the ball on the floor, gets the hip from Moore right there. Man-to-man -man pressure. Buffaloes have changed up a bit. Matt Daniel has also checked into the game. McCullough kick it to Boston. And Moore walked with the ball. No, he was fouled on his way down. Brian Boston didn't feel that he got it. Well, the discussion there of uh, the officials and Jerry White went ahead and he made the call. He said he got it before. And but there's Boston on a play right there. And I think that's where he got it right there, reaching in. Let me say this. When you're 7 foot 270 or in that region, you've got to go ahead and score when you get the ball in deep. And I'm sure that Bob Bender and the staff will tell Tom to call that. Matt Daniel to the baseline. In low Moore. Martis Moore. That's a team points again. That's a problem right there for, for Todd McCullough. You got to play big and make those guys shoot that ball over you. You know you're not going to out quick them. So Joe Harrington has made a couple of moves. He brought a new point guard in. And Matt Daniel, he's gone back to the zone. And he also brought some height then with Charlie Melvin. What I think they're doing is what I put call a combination right there. You see Sanford make the air ball three-pointer, but they're going zone when they score, man-to-man -man when they don't. Daniel on the drive. He walked with it. And Harrington can't get a point guard that can hold on to the ball. Daniel's a sophomore. This is a very young Colorado team. They do not have a senior on their club. 
That is that is good and bad, I guess, because you're going to curl into it. Brian Boston. McCullough looking for the ball, calling for it, and gets it. And a couple of cripples, and he couldn't put See, it down. I, I think I think the, the buffs are lucky right there, but if I'm Melvin, I'm not going to try to get around him, Todd McCullough. He's so big. What I try to do is try to fight position for him, and then if he catches the ball, play behind him, because now you're not giving up inside board position. You're not giving up the lob. Chauncey Billups is back in. Phillips finds Edmonds on the baseline. He walked. Wasn't ready for the pass, and that happens a lot of times when you got a guy who's a great passer. You better be ready for it. Joe Harrington has come to Seattle, trying to move his record to six and four. And the Huskies would like a win before USC gets here on Thursday. Welcome back, Joe Harrington of Colorado. Dave Harshman, he's in a unique situation and an unpleasant situation, quite honestly, for a coach. In three more games, he will lose two players to academic problems. Fred Edmonds, who started this game, will play in this game and two more, and then he's gone for the rest of the season, as is Leroy Carter, who comes off the bench. Well, I think it's really going to hurt with Edmonds because he's a starter. He's been here for, been, been at Colorado for a couple years. High school teammate at Chauncey Phillips, too, which probably didn't hurt in the recruiting process. But, uh, you know, that really hurts. Neither team lighting it up early on. Sanford pops out, gets it to McCullough, and he puts it up and in. But just too strong, too big inside for Melvin right at this point. That's why I say Melvin's got to play, I, I think, on the baseline side and try to protect the basket. Colorado's offense begins and ends a lot of times with Billups. Edmonds. Got away with one there. It looked like he took an extra step, but uh, from Colorado, maybe without a little skate. Full court pressure by the Buffaloes. One advantage to starting three guards in your lineup is attacking a press. Well, what they've done, they've done, they've really extended their zone to a 1 2 2 or, or a 1 or a 3 2, and then drop back into it. The steal by Moore. Phillips to Edmonds to Melvin, who missed the dunk and charged. Well, Offensive foul, it's a Husky ball. Not a smart play there by Edmonds, and the reason is you never throw the ball back to somebody coming down for this very reason. And Jamie Booker, you know, Jamie Booker, toughest defensive guy the Huskies have. He's going to take a charge on anybody. He doesn't care. Nine turnovers in five and a half minutes. Sanford backing in. Difficult shot. Billups up to Tuck. The lob from Melvin with company, and McCullough altered the shot. Shot selection is, uh, is not something some of these guys understand right at this point. Lob pass, McCullough couldn't get there. Nice job by Billups to screen him off. Well, Billups did a great job. Melvin had no clue where the ball was because his back was to the ball. If he would just open to the ball right then, he could have turned around and intercepted that very easily. Look at Chauncey Billups. He was player of the year in the, in the state of Colorado for three years. And, and getting to play in the uh, in the Olympic trials, getting, the, getting that chance really helped him out. Steal by Mac Tuck. Hamilton chases. Nice move with the left hand. Mac Tuck, who averages 15 a game. And here again, after they score, they're in the, in the press, and they'll be back in the zone. Broken by Boston. For Samford, he's fouled. He'll get free throws. Okay, there Mark Samford right there. I thought maybe he'd try to go up and really crush that thing because you need to get the basket as well as draw the foul right there. Great penetration right there by Boston. Nice little layoff pass right there. I thought maybe he'd go up a little stronger. Doesn't get the basket, but draws the foul. Sanford going to the line. Bob Bender said earlier today that one thing that Mark Sanford has to do better is shoot free throws because he's getting to the free throw line. He's just not making them. Came in shooting 
Well, neither team shooting well. Actually, Colorado shooting just under 70%, 68%, but the Huskies shooting 61, not even 61 and a half percent. Patrick Femmerling in, and Todd McCullough out. And to this point, anyway, Todd McCullough staying out of foul trouble. And that's as important on the stat page for Bob Bender as points and rebounds. Tuck off the screen. Mac Tuck, he was a three-point demon last year in the Big A. Colorado by two, Boston. Man-to-man -man pressure. Now it's Femmerling trying to post up. Boston strokes the three. Boston is a very good, the Huskies, like most people, are very good three-point shooters when they have their feet set. Offensive foul right there. Hamilton got in the way of Moore. Actually, to me, that was a no call because Moore did, did kind of shove him out of the way, but it wasn't anything real flagrant. Joe Harrington, you mentioned uh, George Mason also had a nice run of three years at Long Beach State before he arrived on the Boulder campus. Yeah, I've known Joe a long time. We probably go back over 20 years when he was an assistant at uh, Maryland. Played at Maryland as well. Sanford in low, and he moved his feet. Well, that's the second walk called on Sanford, and actually should have been the third because he did it one other time that wasn't called. Pressure. The fall away from Edmonds Femmerling. Femmerling has a good understanding of the game. Of the game. One area that uh, Bender would like to see Femmerling improve, he would like to see him not be so unselfish. He wants him to shoot more. You know, that's, that, that's a tough thing to do. Uh, I can remember when Detlef was here, my father had the same problem, really. He says, you, you know, you're our best player. We want you to have the ball. Hamilton, shot clock's at two. Oh, yes! You gotta give three, you gotta give him three just for the acrobatic on that one. His foot was on the line, it's a two. <laughs> and it's a three-point Washington lead. I mean, there's no degree of difficulty. Not tonight. Jensen. Over to Edmonds on Booker. And Washington likes to run off the miss or the turnover. Edmonds had Jensen wide open inside if he'd have dropped it off that time. Off the screen, Hamilton. Bermeling wants it. The big seven footer going to work on Jensen. Count it. They get a free throw every time. I'm a proponent of the game is won and lost on the block. You go inside until they stop you. Here's a look by Booker right here. Here's someone that catches, locates the defense, drops up the baseline, maybe uses his body very well, draws him off his feet. Jensen right there draws a foul. Got a chance for a three-point play. This is where you say they can make some hay right here. These are three points. You saw that drop step. One thing I'm really impressed with, with Femmerling, his feet and his footwork for a big guy. Has very good foot, feet work, footwork, excuse me. And the fact that he has played a lot of international basketball, I believe really helped him. Three-point play. And a guy that uh, comes to watch Femmerling play on occasion, Huskies by six. Rich Waltz, Dave Harshman, welcome back. Six-point Husky lead. Well, here's the clock running down right there. And there's, excuse me, there's Hamilton just on that acrobatic degree of difficulty, 3.3, but he only gets two points on that shot. You know what's nice about him, though? He had his head up the whole time, and so he had a good look at the basket. He's becoming more and more aggressive. Donald Watts has checked in the ball game, and here you've got two pretty our good freshmen checking each other. Billups and Watts. And also into the game is Matt Daniel. Moore. Martise Moore. I'll tell you what, Colorado isn't great in the post, but they're very good. I'd say what I call medium range, 17 to 18 feet. And of course, we know Bill can shoot the ball to three-point range. And one thing that Joe Harrington has done is insert Daniel as a point guard and move Billups to the two spot. Jason Hartman has checked in also for Washington. Booker off the dribble. 
Hartman trying to get a rebound, bumped into Moore. Jason Hartman has some had some very good games earlier this year. He can really shoot the standing three-pointer. Not great at putting the ball on the floor. Has very limited lateral quickness, but a tough kid will rebound for you. I think he's a very valuable asset for Bob Bender. His role has kind of changed with the arrival of the seven-footers, hasn't he? Well, it really has. You know, and uh, he's playing probably more in the perimeter than he ever has. Phillips into Tuck. He's bumped on the shot. Booker got him. And Mac Tuck will go to the line and get free throws. Well, you know, that's kind of a funny play there, or ironic play, because Tuck looked at the basket, as you see here. We see this is a nice play. He was he got him late, really. He was open on the, on the cut for the for the basket. And then he hesitated in the shot, and there you see him go up with the shot right there and get hit on the arm by Booker. Colorado at 68% from the free throw line this year. Tuck only shooting it a little over 60%, so you know, I just don't understand why people can't shoot 70% from a free throw line minimum. Well, you have to make a video, the Dave Harshman free throw shooting video. You'll make a bunch of money. Watch out to Booker. Beverly wants the ball. Hamilton wants to get it to him. Jensen's doing a pretty nice job of denial. Hartman. Got to get it up. Shot clock at three. It's Booker. Nice job by the Buffaloes and their man to man that time. They're doing a good job. They have good team quickness. Ortiz Moore. He is a good looking player. He's got six in the ball game. The transfer from Georgia Tech. Normally, you don't want a guy to come down and just pull up and shoot it, but I mean, he felt comfortable. He's at 17 feet. He's going to nail it. Colorado on a 4 0 run. Booker finds Watts, and he shuffled his feet. Donald Watts has struggled this year. He's shooting at 22%, but the Washington coaching staff wants him to keep shooting. They feel it's very important for him to find his shot, and he's not going to do that if he doesn't shoot. No, I think so, but uh, right there, see, he passes up an open shot to put the ball down, and like a lot of the Husky guards, for some reason, shuffle their feet when they start. Both teams have been guilty of that tonight. Phillips, a long three, and Hartman has the rebound. Washington doing a nice job on the boards. Yeah, Moore wanted a foul with the back, but the Huskies went up with two hands. 8.50 left, first half. Washington with the ball and a two-point lead. Yeah, Matt Daniel out there on Hamilton. Matt, Matt looks like he's about eighth grade, but uh, player of the year in Arkansas in high school. Femmerling gets the ball, lays it in. You know, one thing about Patrick Femmerling, we know he's not a physical player. Very smart move right there to take the ball up and lay it off the glass. Phillips with a nice crossover. Here comes Watts. It's a four on two. Hamilton. Hartman will get a three. Mac Tuck for Jensen. Great look down the floor by Mac Tuck. The reason Hartman doesn't hit that shot is because he doesn't, he's got to bend over to pick the ball up. Not a real good pass. If he gets a good pass, he's got his feet set, he would have nailed it. Femmerling out a little high. Off to Booker. Shot clock down to a dozen. Watts takes a look at the clock. It's at 10. He'll go to the bucket. Donald Watts. In and out. Femmerling kept alive for Hartman. Phillips. And here come the Buffaloes. Shanti goes down, kept his dribble, but threw it away. Booker did not have the numbers and got it back, and he'll hold it up. And behind the play, Chauncey Phillips is hurt. And I saw him twist it when he went down. And that's the ankle. I don't know if it's the same ankle that he hurt, but he, had, he was out, missed a game because of the sprained ankle. Watts. And Phillips still moving pretty gingerly. Hartman wanted the three, takes the drive. Too strong. Femmerling oh, with the rebound and the putback. He knocked Jensen into the first row. Well, it really did. The one thing, though, I'm watching more. Jensen's not getting any help on the boards. If Colorado would go back and rebound the basketball as a team, they wouldn't be giving up second shots. And another turnover. Matt Daniel double dribble. 
in front of the Colorado bench. Joe Harrington not real happy right now. And a timeout on the floor. The Huskies lead the Buffaloes 20 to 16 with 643 left in this first half. Tonight all the college basketball and all the college football. You'll see some Fiesta Bowl highlights tonight on Press Box tonight 10 o'clock right here on Prime Sports. Can I say go Big Red? There it is right there. And there was Billups, his right ankle, it turned, and we talked about him missing a game, and it was his left ankle, so they're over there, they're retaping it, we're gonna see what happens. Sanford, a little strong on the three, Femmerling can't wrestle the ball away, and here comes Matt Daniel. Finds oh Matt Tuck. Dennis Griffin is checked into the ball game for Colorado. There goes Tuck, lost the ball. Watts finds Boston. He'll take the three. And hit it. Well, number, number 11, Carter, was there, but he had no hand up. And I'll tell you what, you better get a hand up on Bryant Boston. Griffin in strong. And Dennis Griffin. He broke his foot at the start of fall practice. And Griffin did not start practice until the season started. You can see they're taping the right ankle of Chauncey Billups. And you know, coming into tonight, both uh, Boston and Sanford had combined to score about 44%, just under half of the team's points for the Huskies. So, you know, they've got to be on for the Huskies to win. See, the Huskies are running Donald Watts in the baseline now. They're going to try to take advantage of the size inside because Donald hasn't been shooting the ball well away. And they want to give him a chance to get off inside. And that's, they did that in one of the exhibition games earlier. Clock is at two. Booker gets it away. Does not draw iron, and that'll stop the game. That is nothing more than, than poor recognition in the coaches that just drive you through as a coach. One thing I learned when I coached in the NBA, Larry Brown used to have a signal. At eight seconds, they called a color. His was blue. So they knew exactly what they are going to do when it got down to a certain time period. And I think you've got to have those situations. Let's see what this Buffalo team looks like without Billups. 17 turnovers in 15 minutes. Tuck takes it through. He can hit from out there. You know, he's a funny looking. We knew it was going to be a small crowd because of the Fiesta Bowl. There's no energy in this building whatsoever, and that really hurts the Huskies as the home team. There will be plenty of energy, we hope, this weekend with USC coming in Thursday night, UCLA in on Saturday. Boston with a nice spin move. Can he finish? No. Femmerling over the back. Patrick Femmerling is very aggressive to the ball. I really like the way he plays, and I think he's, like I said earlier, he's going to have a good future. But what happens is, and you spin, this is a patented Brian Boston move here, but as you can see, the reason he got called is because he comes one-handed. If you go two-handed most of the time, even if you give a little body, they're not going to call you. Washington in his own look. Yeah, and not, they don't go to that very often. They're dropping back and dropping the point clear back into it. It's a 3-2 zone. Daniel with a skip pass to Mac Tuck. Back to Daniel. He does not shoot much. Amos with the rebound. Mike Amos has checked into the ball game. You talk about bad ankles. Mike Amos has them all, I think. Nice pass. Boston finishes with a left hand. Excellent pass. Set up and a nice deal by Donald Watts right there. And it's a Washington ball. Colorado very careless with the basketball right there. But again, nice pump fake, and there's the backdoor cut right there. Carter doesn't turn his head in time. And the other thing is, Bryant Boston does a great job of protecting the ball by using the basket. And on the inbound pass, it was Donald Watts who knocked it away and off a of Buffalo. Four-point lead, Boston, six-point lead. That just kills you as a coach because you just give up two quick baskets. Brian Boston with 10. Leroy Carter. I like the fact the Husky switches the zone. I think it really gives him a different look. Carter got a man in the air. Give to Griffin. The reach. Boston got a piece of it. You know what? And it's it's uh, it's too bad there because uh, Jamie Booker was in position to take the charge right there as he always is. And 
right here. They're going to call Boston for the reach right there. Boy, I tell you, that's a tough call because it looked like he got all ball from this angle. Washington enjoying their biggest lead of the ball game, 27-21. Huskies on top. Rich Waltz and Dave Harshman back at Washington, 27-21. The Huskies on top. You mentioned that the energy level here at Heck Ed was down, and certainly it is, but I think Washington has done a pretty nice job of making a run to go up six and create their own energy. Yeah, they really have. I thought that I thought the switch from the man to man to the zone, which you're not going to see a Bob Bender team play that much zone, but I think it was a nice, smart coaching move. The other thing I think that can help energy-wise is to pick them up full court, especially with Billups out of the ball game. Well, he's back in there now, but he's got the gimpy ankle. Make Colorado, you know, handle the ball full court, put some pressure on him. Colorado ball. And they've got a full 35. There is Billups. He sprained the left ankle two weeks ago. He just tweaked the right one. And Washington back in that 3-2 look. It was probably going to hurt him in terms of trying to put pressure on it and go around somebody. And I know it's a long ways away from your hands, but bad ankles and, or a knee or anything with your legs really does affect your shot. Oh, tremendously. Because your lift and all your strength, the further out is from your legs. Edmonds got to get it up. Shot clock's at two. More misfires. Billups gets the tip from Dennis Griffin. Smart play by Griffin. Not what you call a lever, but smart enough to tip the ball back out. Colorado known for moving the ball up and down the floor. Very deliberate against this zone. Mack Tuck. And the tip by Edmonds didn't go. Hamilton and the Huskies with it. A six-point lead. It equals their biggest of the ball game. They've been here twice now. Lob pass Sanford. Comes down and scores. And Martise Moore, I think, will pick up the foul. Shows a little more strength out of Mark Sanford. You, you never would have seen this play last year. There's a nice over the top by Hamilton. Maybe he avoids the foul right there. I thought Griffin got him, but there's a the second foul by Moore. His third personal, actually. And that really hurts. And Sanford goes to the line. Well, Boston to this point has uh, has picked up a double, uh, double figure scoring again. I think that's about his 14th of his last 16 games has been a double figure. Bryant already with 10, including a couple three-pointers. So it's an eight-point lead now. Colorado trying to get a 20-second timeout. And they finally do get it with 2.11 left here in the first half. Martise Moore, I don't know if Joe Harrington just wanted to get more out of the game so he didn't pick up number four. But he got the 22nd timeout. Probably more often than not, yeah, with 2.11 to go in the half, down eight. It's really important that they get uh, a good shot this time down. Really important on Saturday night that the Huskies are ready for this crew. UCLA is in Heck Ed, and you'll be right here on Prime Sports. UCLA in Washington, it's live on Saturday. The last time UCLA was in Seattle, they won a national championship. Yeah, well, don't confuse that team with this one. Not yet. Uh, I, I've seen them play uh, tremendously gifted, but uh, not playing nearly as well together as that team and then lacking the leadership. Tuck drives by Amos. As the shot clock expires, Fred Edmonds hits the bucket. To this point, Husky guards are outscoring Colorado 22 to 9. Two big bodies in the ball game. McCullough's back in. And he missed the jump hook. Got the shot they wanted, the Huskies did. You got to convert on that one. Billups, he's not moving well. No, not at all. Not like he did at the beginning where he came down a bit of shake and bake and went around where was guarding him. And Sanford will pick up the foul. I just think that they feel probably that his presence in the game is just helpful to have him in there. Uh, probably at, uh, pro I'd say, 50 to 60%. Edmonds off the inbound. Sanford with a rebound, tip to Watts, and Washington tries to run. Watts will take the three. A little too strong. Here comes Colorado. The Buffalo haven't done much of this tonight, have they? Hamilton got a piece of tuck, and down goes someone on the baseline. 
one of the ball boys, I'll tell you what. Hamilton tried to get into Tuck, and by that I mean you, you see him coming into the picture right here. Put his hand on the right, of Tuck is so strong. He says, I'll just drive you right out of bounds. Colorado averaging 84 points a game. They like to play at an up-tempo pace, and that pace has not been here tonight. And Colorado only attempted two free throws up till now, both of them by Tuck, and he was 0 for 2, so see what he does here. Eight points now for Tuck. He leads the Buffaloes. Yeah, both teams in the bonus right now. McCullough, Jensen got a hand on it, but Ava scoops it up. Final minute and 10 seconds of this first half. And a five point Washington lead. Amos, head fake. Good ball fake and he scores. Good ball fake. Uh, I'll tell you what, Mike Amos isn't going to go around too many guys, but he got himself that play by a good ball fake. This zone has been pretty effective against Colorado. And it really has slowed the game down. Well, now that they've got Sanford playing the top two at 6'7 or 6'8 with a big wingspan. He can drop down and protect against the post. That's a point guard's nightmare. Carter. Out to Billups. A long three and not a good shot. McCullough lost the ball. Tucked to Jensen. Well, the clock was running down. That's a gift. That's too bad because they just lost a handle on it and the Buffs were able to pick it up and take care of the basketball. 22nd timeout. Bob Bender will use it. He wanted it when the ball was back on the baseline and a few seconds escaped. So there's 13 seconds left on a 22nd timeout. And well, and I, I see the play right here, and I see the fact that uh, you know they pick it up and convert a bit. But Terry Christman just made a technical foul on, on Joe Joe Harrington. All Joe Harrington was asking him to do. Let's come out. It was a timeout to ask him to come out there and watch the three seconds. And, I, and, and to me, that that's not. He didn't swear or anything. He's, he just asked him to come out and please watch the three seconds in the key because they're living in the key. And that's all he said. And, you know, and, and I'm not trying to pick on any particular official, but to me, common sense has got to take over. Joe Harrington went out there swearing. He went out there ranting and raving. He just out there saying, "Would you please watch the three seconds?" I read the lips. I watched the whole thing. Hamilton will shoot. The two free throws that won't cost Colorado a possession because Washington had the ball already. But if Hamilton can hit the free throws, it could cost him points. It could really cost him points. Hamilton at 61 percent. I guess I'd like to get an explanation because what I don't understand, timeout had been called and he had just come out and, and, and was approaching Terry. Terry Christian would say something to him to, say, to basically say, please watch it three seconds. Huskies to inbound it. 13 seconds left in this first half. Let's see what kind of shot they get. Watts. Got to get it up. Sanford takes a look at the clock. Desperation. And Colorado did a nice job of defending in the final 13 seconds. Joe Harrington still not real happy and still a little bit puzzled as to the reason for that technical foul. Washington heads to the locker room with a seven point lead. The Huskies lead the Buffalo. We're back at Heck Edge after this timeout on Prime Sports. The Billups will be observed closely here in the opening minutes of this half. Billups right now guarding Hamilton out high. Boston. Along with Sanford, McCullough, and Booker, the starting five for Washington. There's Boston with a three. Billups with a rebound. Not a bad shot. A good look at it because he was standing. He was set. Mac Tuck along with Martise Moore, Billups, Griffin, and Fred Edmonds for Colorado. The bucket goes. And a foul on Jamie Booker. And that's an interesting call right there. To me, that's a no call because Moore, what Moore did, he did a great job. I and mean, we'll get a chance to see it right here. Did a great job. It took the ball down, jumped straight up and down right there. See, to me, it's a no call. It's a call because he, maybe he called it because he flopped. But I, I think he should have just stood his ground, Jamie Booker, that time. Sort of a bad acting foul. Well, it really was, you know. Didn't really bother the shot whatsoever. 
Martise Moore with eight. Colorado struggling from the free throw line. But on the rebound, Edmonds gets it back. Out to Billups. And the Buffaloes get the bucket and a possession now. Griffin to a cutting Edmonds. Difficult shot. Tuck up on the rim. And I think McCullough might have bumped him. I'll tell you one thing I noticed right now is Colorado is so much more aggressive on the offensive glass. When they shoot the ball, they've got two and three people going. In the first half, they were lucky to have one person on the offensive glass. First person along McCullough. Washington. Man-to-man -man pressure. Griffin is open. Tuck trying to bounce it off the Husky. Tuck comes from out of bounds. Can't get the shot away. And he was fouled. No, they called, they called they a charge call on him. They called a charge on him. He got hung up in the air not knowing whether he was going to shoot the ball or pass the ball over to, over to his teammate. See, right here, he goes up in airborne, and there's Hamilton. See, to me, that's kind of, that's kind of a make because Hamilton's still moving in there, too. There's been a few calls. The officials, it's early in the season for them, too. Hey, it's evened up here in the first minute. Man to man pressure for Colorado. They showed a little bit of zone. Sanford with a quick release. Maybe a little too quick in that shot. Not a bad shot, but maybe they could have moved the ball around a few more times. Chauncey Phillips, Hamilton on the reach. Right at the top of the rings. I'll be interested to see if Colorado can get the ball in the hands of Phillips more often and make him a threat because he was not a threat, especially after turning his ankle in the first half. Yeah, I don't think we will see him being able to take somebody one-on-one -on -one like he would be capable of. Was he healthy? He's working on Hamilton right now, trying to rub him off on a screen. Tuck back to Billups. Going to the bucket, finds Matt Tuck. Missed the three. Here comes Booker. Washington has yet to score in the half. Little zone look from Colorado. And three seconds in the lane. And you know what? We were talking at halftime. You and I were watching Joe Harrington. He was talking to Jerry White at halftime. And I think he was lobbying his case, you know. Hey, what I was asking is just watch the three seconds because they go screen and then they turn and stay in the lane. The lobbying cost him a couple points on the technical yes, foul, but uh, it is called here early in the second half. Phillips against Hamilton. Jason doing a nice job so far. Martise Moore way out high. He and Sanford are very similar type players. Almost a carry. Phillips with the shot clock down to eight. Give it off with a left hand blocked by McCullough. Tuck missed the dunk. McCullough got a good piece of it. They got a fresh 35. That surprised me because the ball actually never hit the rim. The hand hit the rim. Griffin with the rebound. See, Billups can't get any legs up into his shot you know, with that ankle. No he, legs at all. He is not a factor right now offensively as a scoring threat. Colorado with a shot clock at 15. Pass down low to Moore. He couldn't hold it. Here comes Hamilton. To Sanford. He's fouled and counted. Now that's his second play. Mark Sanford has run the floor and he gets rewarded for it and gone up strong and drawn the foul. Last year he would not have been able to complete the three-point play. Nice job by Hamilton to give him up, to reward him, and he goes, gets, just gets hammered, and the ball goes through. Mac Tuck picks up number two. That was almost a flagrant foul because Tuck went after him with two hands. Sanford having a decent night from the line. Here's Todd McCullough down low. Yeah, here's Todd going up, and, and you know, you got to be smart. Here's is Mac trying to, to uh, Tuck trying to challenge him. And your point was a good one. The, the ball did not hit the rim, so the shot clock should not have been reset. Yeah, I, I, I should probably should be a, an official, you know. As a joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Phillips going down. Off to Martise Moore. Hey, the shot clock is down again to five. Moore. 
Femmerling got him. Yeah, and not a smart play on Femmerling's part because I thought he did foul him. But it's a smart play on Moore's part because in the end he's trying to just draw contact and get the ball to the basket. Well, right there, I would have called more for the hook on Hamilton right there. But you see Femmerling, see Femmerling comes down with his arms and he doesn't probably realize it. He's active. He really has his hands on people a lot. I like the way he plays though. He has good understanding. Moore with a turnaround. And that's a nice shot over Jason Harper. Ortiz well, Moore with 10. Moore was a good player when he was at Georgia Tech, so he's going to be a good player at Colorado. In two years with Bobby Crenz, he averaged 10 points a game. Booker. Hippity hop, give it off. Beverly with a dunk. A nice job. Jamie Booker took the ball to the seam like you have to, knowing that he could draw the defense. Edmund spins away from trouble and he finishes. See, now that's the first time I've seen Colorado go right at the Husky big men. And quite frankly, Edmund's shot selection in the first half was very poor. Six point lead for Washington. Beverly wants the ball. He's got Griffin on his back. Boston had 10 in the first half. Hamilton into the lane. Boston thought he should have taken the three, and he ends up walking. And I think Bryant would like that back. I, I think he'd like to take that three-point shot. He has a couple in the ballgame. Bob Bender and the Washington Huskies on top of Colorado on Prime Sports. Washington on top, 38 to 32. 15 and a half minutes left in this basketball game. For the latest on Washington Athletics, it's Husky Profile, a one-on-one -on -one contest between Jamie Red of the women's team and Donald Watts of the men's team. Into the pool will go on Husky Profile, Thursday nights, 10.30. Rich Watts and Dave Harshman at, at Heck Edmondson Pavilion. And both coaches have gone to their bench a little bit. Joe Harrington has seen Colorado make a little bit of a run. Dennis Griffin has played a very big part of that. Not a lot of points, but he's had some solid play down low. Edmonds bouncing over to Phillips. Chauncey playing with the bad wheels. Almost a five-second call. Shot clock again, down under 10. Griffin missed the layup. Tuck with a rebound, fouled by Boston. Ooh, that looked like a pretty good check from behind. And, and, and the thing is, the call is made by the baseline official, who's probably a little, little screened on the play right there. But it was a nice play in here. Right there. Yeah, they got all ball. I don't know if he called him on the head or where he, he actually called him. But right before then, but what was impressive is the Huskies were trying to make some space in there and not give up an easy one inside. But Colorado continues to hit the offensive glass and have a lot of success here in the second half. Well, I think they feel that if they're going to play down the stretch with the Huskies, they've got to be more aggressive to the offensive glass. And Griffin, although not a great big uh, physical player at 6'8", but he is 235 and, and seems to understand what Joe Harrington wants done inside. Down to a four-point ball game. Washington on top. Just under 15 minutes left. Sanford in the game with Femmerling, Booker, Boston, Hamilton. This is Booker, head fake, give to Boston. Baseline drive, block. On Fred Edmonds. Edmonds about a half a step late getting there on the baseline. Some good patience that time by the uh, by the Huskies. You see the, di the draw, the dish, and the draw, or the draw and the dish, excuse me, by Booker that time. That's the second time in a row that Booker has put the ball on the floor and really had no plans to take the ball to the basket. Sanford missed the finger roll. Femmerling's going to get a rebounding foul. You know, Patrick Gipsos looks on his face like he's, uh, his shorts are too tight or, you know, he, he just, you know, he gets those grimaces. And actually what he did was it was a smart play again, but there again he comes over somebody with one hand And that's why I believe the foul was called There's a tendency isn't there with a young big guy to, to try to go over people rather than work on getting the position and using the feet Yeah, I think so most guys today try to try to uh, be lazy and use their use their hops Jason Hamilton not lazy has the steal Edmonds with the block. No the layup is good. Hamilton's got six. That's a big play right there because Colorado doesn't convert, doesn't even get his shot. It was a four-point game. They had a chance to get it to two. 
Drive by Tuck, Femmerling the block and the foul. And a technical. And right now, Bob Bender, not real pleased. I'm not sure if he's upset with Jerry White who called the technical or Patrick Femmerlin. I'll tell you what, my block, my view with block is you see the steal here by Hamilton and the breakaway and does a nice job with the left hand to get the ball up over the defense. But I don't know if we've got a shot of the block that Femmerlin did and it was called for the foul, but he did a nice job here. Here he is coming from the, from the top side. Well, that's a pretty good block, but you know, bang, bang and everything. The one thing I do like about Patrick is he plays he plays with his with a, with emotion. I think you've got to have that when you play basketball, but you got to keep your emotions under check too. Every year, as Tuck misses the free throw, every year officials have a point of emphasis, a, a, a certain area that they want to clean up in the game. And it, it seems to me that this year officials have been very very quick to pull the trigger on technical fouls, not only on, with players on the floor but coaches on the bench. You see it at all levels, and I've seen some stuff that it just just appalls me from the, from the standpoint of the way the game is being called. And I think cooler heads need to prevail, both with the officials and, and, and also with the coaches and the players. But you know, common sense got to come into play at times. That's that, that's the biggest statement I say. You know, you got to have some common sense if you're going to wear that striped shirt. You know, uh, Mac missed both free throws. I think he's one for six now. That kills you. You have a chance to be a four-point game, excuse me, a two-point game with a, with the ball, a chance to tie it right now. But Billups made his two, and Colorado does have a chance to cut it to two. That's a uh, potential six-point swing. Billups, a little head fake, gets a screen. Moore missed the three. Colorado ball. Dennis Griffin hustling on the baseline got tangled up with Bryant Boston. Yeah, he really did. And and, and I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that, w that are screaming for a foul there when they talk about the ones that Patrick Femmerling uh, got called on him. Hamilton. Mac Tuck got the height advantage on Boston, almost trying to back him in. Edmonds spins into the lane. That's a nice shot. Fred Ed Edmonds has eight. Much smarter this half, Edmonds, in terms of his shot selection and doing the things that he does best. This is as close as Colorado has been since midway through that first half. Mike Gilmas was checked in for Femmerlin. Boston off the screen, foul away from the ball. Now, it's, it's on Griffin in the post. He's fighting for position with, with Amos. But, you know, this, this is where the scouting report comes. You know, Mike, when I, Mike Amos gets the ball, I'm not going to fight him. I'm not going to bump him in there. He's not your offensive threat. He's not the guy the Huskies are going to go to. They're going to go to Sanford. They're going to go to Hamilton. They're going to go to Boston. Booker has to get it in, and Amos comes to get the ball. Fresh 35 for the Huskies on a shot clock. Two point lead, Boston a three. Got it. He's very good at coming off that tight little tick. And the reason he could get that shot off, Rich, is he caught it and shot it all in one motion because he knew he had to. Three or four from beyond the arc is Bryant Boston. And it's back to a five point ball game. And there was almost a turnover on the pass. Phillips testing that ankle. Forced the pass. And Hamilton got a hand on it. Here comes Washington. Hamilton. Boston with a layup. Great job. Excellent job of Hamilton to push the ball up the floor. An excellent job for Boston to run the lane. Martise Moore. Oh, he follows it. How about that? You take a 15-footer, it doesn't go, and you slam it in. Yeah, big time play. He, he shot the ball, hit the floor, and was right to the offensive board. Hamilton gets free off the screen, won't shoot it. Boston will. He got another. Well, Edmonds isn't quick enough to check him, and he cannot go behind two people. And I looked at Joe Harrington, and he had one of those expressions. So for crying out loud, get a hand in his face. 18 points 
for Bryant Boston. Phillips in low to Moore. He's starting to feel it. Bounce it to Edmonds, stripped by Boston. Booker to Sanford. Mark Sanford, and it's a 10-point lead, biggest of the ball game. The great recognition by Booker to know Sanford was coming down the middle of the trailer. Phillips in the lane, blocked by Amos. Edmonds stolen by Boston. And here comes Washington again. Booker, lob pass, Sanford with a dunk! And Colorado's got to get a timeout. Joe Harrington just called a 20-second timeout. But this is where the Huskies have got to take it and keep the hammer down if they're going to be successful. They've got to keep the run on. The hammer is down right now. Thanks to Mark Sanford. Again, great recognition by Jamie Booker right there. And a nice screen by Mike Amos on uh, Moore right there, where Moore wasn't even going to get off the ground to contest that pass. Both of those dunks were started by Bryant Boston Steels. Maybe that's because he's the number one uh, stealer, if you will, in, the, uh, uh, in Husky history now. This is what I liked right there. There was some zip on that pass, and Boston was a recipient because he ran the floor really well. Putting the hammer down, a 12-point lead. That's a good point because Washington at times has struggled, not only this year, but last year. When they get an opponent down with a 12-point lead, instead of stretching it to 16 or 18, sometimes teams have a tendency to creep back into it. Yeah, in the last two minutes, they've outscored the, the Buffalo 12 to 2. And you know, Hamilton is out of the game because he's got the bad knees. As you see uh, Sanford almost go for the steal there. But Watts is in at the point. Greg Jensen, Kritza has checked in. He scores. And Amos with the foul. But Kritza didn't play much in the first half. Played two minutes, you know. When I watched him shooting the ball around before the game, and he looked like he not only had a nice touch from the outside, but big and strong inside. Nice cut, nice pass. Good recognition of where the defense was. Kritza will go to the line and try to complete a three-point play. And try to bring Colorado within nine. You better have him in the ball game. He stepped up to that free throw line and nailed that thing like he knew what he was doing. Timeout on the floor. The Huskies with a run. Can Colorado climb back? 52-43. This run fueled by Mark Sanford, but also the defense of Bryant Boston. Right here makes a great play. Gets all ball. But as I told you in the break, and here's Booker pushing it, and seeing out of the corner of his eyes, Sanford running the middle, doing a nice job. The trailer is a man who's always going to be open. The people who handle the ball know that. But I was going to say, I half expected the whistle to blow on that play by, by uh, Bryant Boston because there's been a lot of those type of calls. Chauncey Billets on the bench, and, and that's a shame not only for Colorado but for us because I was really looking forward to seeing this freshman. He turned his ankle about eight minutes into the first half, and he has not been the same. Huskies passing the ball much better in this half. Well, Billups, the uh, leading assist man at over seven per game for Colorado. I think he's only got one this evening. Yeah, and he's the leading scorer in the Big A Conference. Watts with a nice drive. Amos missed the layup. Will they call it a bucket? They're going to call basket <laughs> interference. Here's Amos. Ooh. The, but the reason yeah. is the ball was still in contact You're with right. the rim, and even though it wasn't going to go in. And it's a good call. It is. Matt we'll, Daniel. We'll, we'll let the officials know when they do a good job. <laughs> Daniel running the point, working against Watts, little around the world dribble. Max Tuck into the lane, scoop shot, missed it. Amos rebound, and he's fouled. So Mike Amos has been called the pawn. Right now, things are starting to go. He shot that ball off the heel of his hand. Things are starting to go a little bit south for Colorado right now. And if they don't hold it together, the floodgates could really open, and the Huskies could go on one of those runs that they need to close it out. Mac Tuck with his third personal. Shooting percentage up for Washington. Slightly. 75%.
Sanford off a screen. Shot clock at a dozen. Watts on the lob. He missed the layup. Here comes little Matt Daniel. Moore with a three. Well, I tell you, Moore is a better player than I, I mean. I knew he was going to be a good player, but as Joe was telling me before the game, he's just getting back into it after sitting out for a full year. Yeah, he, was, he did not play a game for, I think, 600 days after transferring from Georgia Tech and sitting out a year. Amos bumped by Kritza. You know, Jamie Booker tonight has seven assists, which is a career high for him, and just could have had another one there and a, and a pass inside, but the little easy one was missed. Booker really is the unsung hero of this basketball team, isn't he? I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's the best he's, defender. He's the guy that does the dirty work. I said this last year. He was an athlete trying to become a basketball player, and he's become a basketball player during last year and this year. Boston with a scoop shot won't go. Amos give it to Sanford. He's fouled. And it will be free throws for Mark Sanford. Well, nice look here by, uh, excuse me, by uh, Mike Amos. When I thought he was going to catch it and go right back up, but he saw uh, Sanford on the weak side just dumped it down low to him. Sanford now three of five. This is probably the best I've seen uh, Mike Amos play in, in extended periods of time because, uh, as you know, his ankles are, are really bad and hasn't been able to play uh, for many extended minutes this season. Back to a nine-point lead. Kritza gets the ball against Amos and scores over him. Where's he been? On Two minutes in the first half. Now on the bench, the sophomore from Colorado Springs. Well, it's a different look right now without Billups in there. Booker gets it to Amos on Kritza. Jamie finds Boston. That's excellent patience. Booker had the three but didn't take it because he knew Boston was coming around on the screen. Exactly. See, they're actually looking for Boston as the second option on that play, and, and he's been open on that all night. Little zone look now. Kritza draws the contact, gets it to Tuck, who scores with a left hand. 12 now for Mack. I thought, Tuck. I thought Amos was going to get that one. It looked like he was right there, and Tuck just avoided it. Boston with 20 in the ball game. Sanford trying to post up Jensen. <laughs> Jensen's going to get the foul. Sanford was kind of having his way with Jensen. He was shoving him around pretty good. Well, they've, they've called uh, two or three of those holds in the post on Colorado this, this half. They've been guilty of them in the post there. They're really fighting for post position right there. Both players really working it. You know, I, I think it's going to be interesting. We used to say, you know, it's great the non-league wins. You need those wins to get confidence. And now when you get in the league, you want to see how guys are going to do. Are they going to measure up? Are they going to continue their scoring? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Their assists, their rebounding, all those things. And if you can continue to play the same way in league play as you can in non-league play, then you know you've got a pretty good basketball team. Sanford with 14. Washington would like to see this man play in the Pac-10 Conference as he had in this preseason, averaging 17 points, six rebounds. And didn't have a rebound at halftime, and that's that could be disconcerting, but he needs, he needs to hit those boards. 16 for Sanford, 20 for Boston. The go-to guys have been gone too often, and they have produced. Washington on top of Colorado, 59 to 50. 7.15 left in this basketball game. And the Husky very happy right now with the way Washington playing in this basketball game. Boise State 
Gonzaga tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. It's live. Boy, the Bulldogs have a good club. They put a real scare on the Huskies a few days ago. Boise State is struggling right now. They've lost yeah. a couple guys. And my buddy Scott uh, Snyder, you see in the promo right there, 34, a uh, good friend of his dad. His dad, Nick, was 50 years old yesterday. He's really old. You're old, Nick. But you got a good young player there for a son. Chauncey Billups has checked back into the game for Colorado. If the Buffaloes are going to make a run, now would be an opportune time. Lob pass too hard for Fred Edmonds, and it's a turnover. Yeah, both teams shooting. Let's see. Huskies 48.9, Colorado 48.8. That's pretty good. Your Fiesta Bowl score for you channel surfers who have probably go, arrived go, here. Go Big Red. See, yeah, you're not I a front runner, I, co are you? I coached there for a year. Oh, okay. Go back and look at my bio. Right. One of my 27 stops. Hamilton finds Donald Watts. Watts has got to get rid of it. Does Hamilton with a shot clock down to five. Shot clock at three. Hamilton, I think, walked. Yeah, he did. I think he was lucky he didn't get called for the off-arm hooking when he tried to get around there. So, you know, lesser of two evils right there. There you go. Here you get to see him. Well, you got that. You got that left arm out right there. This is a critical. I, actually, I don't know. I don't think he did walk. This is a critical time right now for Washington because they have to play with a lead, and that's not something they were able to do much of last year. Right. And you know they're in that stretch in that no man's land there where they built the lead up to ten. I thought they were going to blow it out. Haven't been able to do that this year. Kritzer with the follow won't go. The tip by Amos triggers it to Sanford. Big miss. Big a miss in the putback. Across to Boston for three, and it's short. Billups with a rebound. Can he hold it? Yes. Well, he does not look comfortable on those sore ankles. Mack Tuck for three. Kritza with a rebound and the putback. Boy, Tim Kritz is having a, a good second half. He's got seven points. He is, and he just missed the putback before, and he was upset with himself. But he, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a yeoman. He's a yard, hard worker. He's like an offensive lineman. Watts gets it to Sanford. The follow-up jumper. Not a good shot to take, and, and that's one thing Mark does too often. Edmonds with two hands, and all of a sudden, Colorado is within five with five minutes left. See, Bob Bender's up saying five passes. See what happens is they make one pass to Sanford, and he shoots the ball because he feels it's kind of his turn. You can't do that. you got to play within the offense. Hamilton, he's fouled on his way to the bucket. Team fouls equal now at nine, so they're both in the bonus, and the next foul on either team will put them in the double bonus. And foul trouble for Colorado. Martise Moore now has four. Mac Tuck has been playing with three. Smart move by Hamilton there to, to curl the pick that time. You know, I think that Bryant Boston probably uses the screen as well as anybody on the Husky team to set his man up for either the jump shot or if you're going to overplay him, the backdoor cut as you saw in the first half. Hamilton hits the free throw. Chauncey Billups has checked out. And so Matt Daniel is back in. And I'll tell you, I'll take my hat off him because I think he really did try to play. I just think he's in a lot of pain. Seven point lead. Back tuck in traffic. Kritza with a loose ball. Boston with Sanford. And here comes Colorado. Daniel Edmonds again with two hands. Bryant should have given the ball up that time. You had people, you had numbers, you got to convert that score. And it, generally what happens is everybody's in transition, so you miss that opportunity and you get an easy one the other end for Colorado. And it's back to a five-point ball game. Amos backing in on Kritza. Got him in the air, slipped. And the foul will be on Krinza before the shot. It'll be two free throws regardless for Mike Amos. <laughs> Joe Harrington has his fourth <laughs> He says, we got him, we can't get a call. He says, all the calls in my post on every time. They throw it. You know, I'll tell you what, if I'm, if I'm Washington, I throw the ball on the post every single time down because they're getting the fouls called. 
But on the other hand is, I think my, Mike Amos is shooting 38% from the free throw line. Yes. So that I is. didn't feel bad. I knew I wasn't going to jinx him. No. 38% is Amos. I got one or two. Big free throw. Six point ball game. Four minutes left. Matt Daniel. Working Matt, the point. Matt Daniel with the CU. Uh, Crooks are down low. I'm, I'm trying to get my thoughts here with, this, with the CU. What do you call those things that they tattoo? Yeah. The one on his pants, he got it down on his ankle. He's a team player. Four point ball game. Sanford kick it back out. Booker. Amos working on Kritzer, who I think has been the difference for Colorado here in the last five minutes. Lob pass for Sanford against Edmonds. Count it. That's the third basket tonight that Mark Sanford has got and drawn a foul and hopefully can complete the three-point play. High nice. advantage for the Huskies, and they've exploited it. Well, nice look over the top, too. Edmonds did not know where the ball was, couldn't defend him. This is the key right here with the free throw. Edmonds has two. Sanford has struggled from the line as well, but not tonight. 19 for Sanford. He completes a three-point lead. And some breathing room for Washington. With 327 left, Washington 65, Colorado 58. Rich Waltz and Dave Harshman on the campus of the University of Washington. And the Huskies trying to close out the Buffalo 65 to 58. But Colorado just won't go away. Well, Colorado's done a nice job of attacking here. And this is the, this is the, uh, the uh, turnover. The Huskies missed on the easy one, and Edmonds commits uh, or flushes it at the other end. But that started because the Huskies missed the easy one on their, on their breakaway. Seven point lead, Nebraska running away with it. So you channel surfers hang out here for the final five minutes. Turn around, jumper by Moore won't go. Hooker with the rebound for Washington. And the Huskies picking up the pace, Samford. Hello. Jimmy Booker gives it that, that shrug. He says, hey, I saw you. He threw a nice <laughs> diagonal 50 foot pass for a lob dunk. <laughs> Don't apologize for that. I think that's about his eighth assist for the evening. Sanford wanted it earlier. He was open for a good five seconds before the pass. And a Washington foul. Sanford has 21, but it's been Jamie Booker who has uh, been having a tremendous night. Yeah, Booker's up to uh, nine assists now, although the latest stats I got, he hadn't scored uh, from the, uh, hadn't scored, period. I'm sure the, the type of player that Jamie Booker is, he'll take the nine assists oh. and no points any night. No problem. No problem. All he wants is that W. Martise Moore with a free throw. Edmonds. Uh, check it is Edmonds. Edmonds now with 11. Eight point ball game. Howard Fires checked in for Colorado. And Washington just trying to run some clock. Amos wants the ball. Backing in. And Mike Amos goes to the line. Martise Moore with the foul. And that's his fifth. And that hurts just because of his presence of being able to score both inside and outside and being able to, to defend. He's going to have a good career. He's going to have a good year for Colorado. So Moore goes to the bench. Remember, Chauncey Billups has been on the bench most of the night with a sprained right ankle. There's Billups right next to him. Yeah, Moore takes out 15 points and five boards for the evening. And the guy to his left is about, what, 23 points a game? Just under 23 points a game. And uh, I don't think he had, did he score this evening? He had one, yeah, he had the first basket of the game. And a couple free throws as well. So he finished with four. Hey, Amos hit a free throw. Four points, four rebounds, four turnovers for Chauncey Billups, and it's been a tough night. One of two for Mike Amos. 
slowly bringing his average right on up. Eight point lead with 2.15 left. Mac Tuck, they're gonna have to get some points from Mac Tuck and they do. So he just put his shoulder down, his head down and went to the basket. Just like a Mac Tuck would. <laughs> There's Hamilton in the lane, trying to get it to Sanford and it was knocked out of bounds. Bob right. Bennett is like it. He says, slow it down, slow it down. We don't need any of those fancy things. We just need to come down. Right now, the, the clock is our ally if we ch choose to use it. Greg Jensen for Colorado checks in. Ted Kritza sits down. Huskies have 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Sanford's going to use maybe a second of it. Not a good decision. Daniel up the floor. Colorado. Down by six now, a minute 50 left. Tuck gets a couple threes there, right there, folks. There's one, one of them. Right there. Uh-oh, Mac Tuck has 17. And Bob Benner just tried to put his fist through the to, through the, the chair over there. And uh, luckily it wasn't a wood chair because he probably would have hurt himself. But I tell you what, that's exactly what we're talking about. 141 left, Washington's lead is melting quite slowly and painfully. What went on with Bob Bender in the Washington huddle during that time? Well, out? first of all, I think I would have said to Mark Sanford, not chew him out, but just say, hey, Mark, we can't take a shot with one second gone on the, on the clock. We need to, to utilize the clock. And then down here on the defense area, they say, guys, they got one great three point shooter, and he's killed us all night. That's a tough. 32, get a hand in his face. Colorado, man to man pressure, minute and a half left. And the Buffaloes with that three-point shot, they don't need to go for a steal. All they need is the ball back. Please. Hamilton takes the 15-footer, missed it. It's tipped up and in by Fryer. Sanford will get credit for the bucket. He now has 23. But it was Fryer who had it bounce off his hands and go in. It's a five-point Washington lead. This is Tuck. He's dangerous from beyond the arc. And Booker went right through the screen. And the foul goes to Edmonds. Offensive foul. Tough call for Colorado in that situation right there. What I was just what I was going to say is you made the best comment in the fact that Colorado didn't need to foul. And how many times in the first half did they make the Huskies run the clock down and take some ill-advised shots? Although one of them was a shot that Hamilton did hit. And that time uh, Hamilton probably shot the shot he shouldn't have shot. Maybe he should have passed the ball and made a cut to the basket, but the tip in bails him out. Here's a look. Foul goes on Edmonds. And Booker makes one of two. So Jamie does have a point tonight to go with nine assists. <laughs> Leroy Carter checks in for Colorado. That's a tough call to see that on the on the uh, replay right there because uh, to me that's a non-call, but you know it's made. Now you got to overcome it. Daniel runs the point for the Buffaloes. Edmonds ready with the screen. Baseline drive, Dan has almost lost his footing. Gets it to Edmonds, loose on the floor. Bodies hit the deck, held ball, it's a Buffalo ball. It really is, but see what happens that time when you're that small, Daniel dribbles the ball down to the baseline and picks the ball up. Cardinal sin right there, if he'd have kept control of the ball, and, and uh, they obviously were trying to get it to tuck for the shot. Colorado now, they need to get a shot up, they need to score, and then they need to call timeout. Washington has taken a 20 second timeout. Bob Bender wants to reset some things. Well, only 16 seconds on the shot clock, 48 on the game clock. So we're looking at here, I was watching Joe Harrington telling uh, Matt Daniel, hey, we can't be having you penetrate clear down in there and pick the ball up. So it uh, be interesting to see what they, they've got the ball on the baseline. Be interesting to see what they run right now. I still say it's got to be tucked. It's got to be a quick shot, and they've got to pound the offensive glass and hopefully knock it back in. It doesn't necessarily have to be a three-pointer, but if they get one, that'd be nice. There is Mac Tuck right now. Fred Edmonds is really the only other offensive threat, although Ted Kritza has poured in nine points in the second half. Tuck is the long-range bomber. Edmonds has not attempted a three so far this year. Jensen screams. Daniel trying to get it to Tuck. Boy, the shot clock might be a factor. Carter takes a long three. And it's short. Hamilton the rebound. Jason's in trouble. And he's fouled. Jensen with the reach. 
Well, here's one thing I'm going to say, and not to criticize, but Kitsna has done a good job in the paint. There's a 20-second 20, 20, uh, timeout. I would have had him in the game on the offensive end of the floor. Now they're bringing him in the game on the defensive end of the floor. He can score. He has a, he's a knack to get the ball to the basket. Ted Kritza did not score in the first half. Didn't play much, but he has nine here, in the, nine here in the second half. Played two minutes, didn't attempt a basket, a, a shot at all. They had a foul, had a turnover. Jason Hamilton now at the line, and it looks like if Washington shoots their free throws, they get win number seven. Politely quiet in here while Hamilton shoots his free throws. <laughs> Everybody's kind of holding their collective breath. Yeah, I, you know, this is a, this is an important win for, for Bob Benner and the Huskies and the Husky program. And, you know, like, I, I know what he's going to tell them when he goes to the locker room. It's going to be very short. Hey, guys, congratulations. This is a good win for us. We accomplished our goal, which is to be 7-2. But now the real season starts. Yeah, by the way, here's the tape on USC. Let's yeah. watch it. Edmonds, baseline drive. He scores. Fred Edmonds. And the Buffaloes get their timeout, but with just 23 seconds left. 72-66, Washington by six. Now here's something interesting. You know, I, I, I watch, I watch, you know, me. I'm a basketball junkie, so I watch a lot of hoops. I happen to watch the Cougars play at Syracuse. Cougars should have won that game. They missed two putbacks and missed a two-shot free throw. But what I'm trying to, what I was going to say is, they call a timeout at the end. They took the ball out on the side, and what they did is they threw the ball into, to, uh, I think it was Fontaine. He took two dribbles, jumped in the air, and threw the ball back in to Antrim, who had thrown the ball in, who took a three-pointer. Well, especially when you're on the road, it dictates you take the ball to the basket when you're on the road because you've got to create a situation that maybe you draw a foul, maybe you draw a defender to you who kicks to somebody, or maybe you can go ahead and score and draw a foul. Who knows? There's a lot more situations than just trying to pull up and shoot a three. And that was the point right there where Edmonds took the ball in deep and scored and then called the timeout. And that's what you got to do. Now, defensively, if you're Colorado, you got to play what I call over the top. You got to get a hand around. You got to try to force the pass up towards the baseline. Go for the steal. If you don't get the steal, you got to foul immediately so the clock stops. Here's that last drive to the bucket. You were illustrating it when you are on the road, got to go to the hoop. Edmonds did just that. Well, you know, Mark Sanford doesn't want to foul him right there. Luckily, he didn't call him for that one because it could have been a three point play right there. So you got to be real careful if you're the Huskies. And there's the man, Chauncey Billups. What a different game this might have been had Billups not turned his ankle. Although he was not burning it up in the first half. No, it really wasn't. And I got to give the Huskies a lot of credit. They did the job they had to do. Hamilton fouled. Normally, he's a guy you might want to foul at, at 61%. But he's been very good from the free throw line tonight, as has the, the entire Washington team. Much better. At 16 of 22. And with this win, it'll be the longest win streak in, in the uh, Bob Bender era here. And uh, hopefully it'll go to five Thursday night. It's not done yet, though. No, I know that. Uh, you know, the one thing that I, uh, I'm curious to see USC, although we're not doing the game, but I'm curious because they've won some games, quite frankly, I didn't think they would win. Uh, I think they only have two losses up to this point. So uh, we'll see just if they're for real. Now Washington and USC may be two of the more improved teams in the Pac-10 conference. The, the conference this year, there's a little mystery surrounding it because UCLA has lost a lot, obviously. Stanford's real good. We'll see Stanford lost Tim Young. I don't know how long he's out there. Big seven-footer. He's, he's legit. Wild shot doesn't go. Edmonds will take a jumper, miss it. Kritza with the putback. With 10 seconds left, Buffalo's get a timeout. Kritza now in double figures with 11. I'm not sure why they stopped the game. And neither is Bob Bender. There, were, there was no, yeah, there was a timeout. Yeah, he, he called timeout. He put, like, two guys clearly called timeout right here, and I don't know. <laughs> and Joe Harrington says, Jerry, why we called timeout? Let's talk more about the uh, the Pac-10 conference. Tim Young gone at, uh, gone at Stanford. Cal has a very young team, and with Abdur Rahim, uh, they might be a, a, a team that will give a lot of teams trouble. Arizona may be down a little bit this year. They've well, struggled a bit. Okay. Although at 10 and one, no, I mean, relatively it, speaking, that there, there are some games that they. Well, you're right. They have. Let's look. Let's look. 10 and one. Arizona. Washington State. Seven and one. They're legit. They're mm -hmm. very good. Hendrickson. 
you know, that's a big loss if he doesn't play. Yeah, it's listed as day-to-day. -day. He may play Thursday against UCLA. Huskies 6-2. and two. I think the Huskies, they, they have, I think they're a good basketball team. I think this weekend is going to determine how far they go in the league. Stanford 6-2. and two. We know they're good, and that depends upon the big guy coming back. UCLA 7-3. and three. The thing that bothers me about UCLA and watching them is they've got tremendous talent. They're very young, but they don't, they, they appear, to, appear to be playing more five as five individuals rather than as a team, you know, but they always scare you because they've got great talent. Okay, USC is 7-4, and four. Oregon is 7-4, and four. Oregon's rebuilding. So is that a legit 7-4? and four? Cal 5-3. and three. Cal schizophrenic. Boy, they got talent. California could be could be in the top of the league. Then you got Arizona State and then Oregon State at two and six. I'm surprised Oregon has struggled as much as they have this year early. Hamilton fouled in backcourt. Final seconds ticking off. Well, they lost the big left the lieutenant guard from last year, Williams, the guy could really shoot. And so I, you know, they had some success early playing some weaker teams, and now they've come back, and I think they've come back a little to the to maybe more of their level. So I think that'll be interesting too. You know, if the Huskies can can continue to to improve, you know, that's the biggest thing with a young group. Hey, we want to improve this week. We want to win, but we all want to improve. So as we continue to go out there, now if we're looking at a 500 season, you know, you're looking at uh, you know 16, 17 wins for the Huskies. Hamilton has had a wonderful night from the line, 14 points. Ten of them have come from the line. And it's a turnover from Colorado. Final seven seconds, and this ball game is over. Washington will go to seven and two. Four game win streak they'll take into conference play. And fittingly, it ends in the hands of Jamie Booker, who had nine assists tonight. If I was going to play of the game, it would be for Jamie Booker. And I'll tell you what, I think Bob Bender probably feels the same way. You know that Bryant Boston and Mark Sanford are going to score for him, but Jamie Booker is going to do all the dirty work. you got to have Jamie Booker types in your ball club to be successful. The Huskies did the dirty work tonight. They beat Colorado 76 to 68. Washington is 7 and 2. They will await the arrival of USC on Thursday night. We're back after this.